I'm General Manager for NZFAI, um, New Zealand Farm Assurance Program. Um, work for them three days a week and then two days a week for Beef and Lamb New Zealand um, and both currently based in Wellington. So I'll just share my screen with you. <clears throat> okay, can Yep, we can see that. Good. Great. Yep. Okay. So the New Zealand Farm Assurance Program, or NZFAT as it's known, was developed and launched in July 2017 by Red Meat Profit Partnership, or RMPP, as it's known, a primary growth partnership program that involved MPI six of the meat processing companies, two of the major banks and Beef and Lamb New Zealand. Prior to the development of NZFAP, individual meat companies um, ha had their own audit programs. And in some cases, if a farmer was supplying three or four different companies, they were getting audited three or four times. So there was identified that there was a real opportunity for collaboration and to, to try and develop um, collaborative New Zealand farm assurance programs to take to the world and remove duplication in the sector. With the RMPP program coming to an end in March this year, the meat companies that had signed up formed New Zealand Farm Assurance Incorporated um, and the NZFAP program and the draft NZFAP plus standards um, transition to NZFAI. Um, and they're responsible for the ongoing management and sustainability of the programs and ensuring that it's fit for purpose. NZFII purposes to ensure that New Zealand Farm Assurance Program is a foundation assurance program for red meat and wool that delivers an authentic and independently verified program that meets customer and consumer expectations both in New Zealand and globally. Collaboration has been key to the development of a um, New Zealand Farm Assurance Program and currently there are 15 meat processing companies and 23 wool companies that are members of NZFAI. And then we have industry representatives that are associate members, um, as in Beef and Lamb New Zealand and Deer Industry. Um, currently, there are over 8,000 certified farms in New Zealand. And by moving to the um, collaborative farm assurance program, they've reduced been a 37% reduction um, in duplication across the sector and was also a saving of 470,000 per annum. The key priorities for NZFAI in the next 12 to 18 months are the rollout of the NZFAT Plus program, um, looking to digitize NZFAT and NZFAT Plus standard with the key being to remove, uh, to keep it simple and remove duplication as well as continuing to grow NZFAI membership base through its farmers, its members um, and the companies um, involved and through animals covered by the program. So the under NZFAI, we have two assurance programs. There is the foundation program upon which the collab collective red meat and wool industry can deliver an authentic and independently verified best practice animal raising and production assurance standard to consumers internationally. It covers on-farm order and certification for farmers, beef and deer production, sorry, sheep, beef and deer production. Consumers are asking where the product has come from, how it has been raised, and is it safe to eat? Red meat and wool produced under this program comes with assurances in terms of integrity, origin, traceability, biosecurity, environmental sustainability, and animal health and welfare. These are essential when it comes to maximizing product returns and meeting consumer expectations. With farmers audited every three years by sure quality NZFA's eyes preferred independent auditor and certification body, NZFAT delivers to both national and international food safety standards. If you supply stock to several meat or wool processors, instead of having multiple audits, you will simply have one audit, which will mean less time required and less stress. Just, ever... jump, just jump in there, just a question about, you're talking about the, the red meat sector and the wool sector. So, yes. does, and this obviously includes deer, yes. but doesn't include the dairy industry at this stage? 
No, it doesn't at this stage. How are we ever? We are um, currently um, talking, um, you know, looking at a um, dairy equivalence and whether there is opportunity to work with the dairy companies and, um, you know, get some sort of a dairy equivalence against their programs versus the NZFAC program so that the likes of dairy cattle can be um, farm assured as well. So that is something that we're looking at as one of our priorities for the next 18 months. Cheers. Um, nearly every um, New Zealand meat and wool processing company uses this program to deliver their customer expectations regarding integrity, traceability, biosecurity, environmental sustainability, animal health and welfare. The NZFAP program isn't mandatory, although most processes have NZFAP certification as a requirement in their terms and conditions of supply. So in essence, it's the ticket to supply. The NZFAP requirements are laid out in the NZFAP standard, um, which is available on the nzfap.com website. There's also a handbook which provides valuable guidance on how to meet these requirements and where to find further information. And that's also available on the website along with an application form. For farmers wanting to join the program, support is available from participating meat and wool processing companies. Um, the benefits are numerous and most members pay a premium for livestock that is compliant. The more recently developed voluntary higher level sustainability standard, NZFAT Plus, builds on the NZFAT program to cover people, farm and natural resources and biosecurity. It aims to protect and enhance all the resources for sheep and beef and deer farms while limiting the effect of practices on the environment and communities. Both farm assurance programs are independently audited um, to ensure their authenticity and integrity are maintained. Did I go the wrong way there? Apologies. Um, NZFAT Plus has been developed to build on the foundation NZFAT program to protect and enhance the farm's resources, including human, built and natural, and building business resilience and sustainability. Customers globally are starting to seek assurances in relation to environmental standards and we anticipate that this will only increase while domestic regulatory pressure on agriculture grows due to concerns around environmental sustainability. NZFAP and NZFAP Plus will help ensure New Zealand farmers retain their domestic social license and market access globally through demonstrating environmental custodianship. A key function of the program is to develop a culture of continuous improvement within the red meat and wool sector, which is driven by farmer knowledge and understanding rather than a minimum compliance mindset. We're encouraging farmers to get on the journey as they don't need to meet all of the standards at once. The purpose of the NZFAT program is to create more sustainable and prosperous farming businesses through understanding resources and supporting continuous improvement through adoption of appropriate practices. It provides an authentic and independently verified sustainable farm insurance standards to our global customers and demonstrates to the New Zealand and international communities that New Zealand red meat wool sectors are farming sustainably and ethically, provides confidence in the red meat and wool consumers to customers and consumers and supports value and integrity of farm products and claims. The NZFAC program aims to enhance the farm natural resources and contribute to communities while managing the effects of on-farm practices. The on-farm practices include people, farm and natural resources, and biosecurity. Planning and documentation are key elements of all three areas. We are currently looking at digital options to support farmers in this area, with a goal to keep it simple and remove duplication. Um, and Gretchen will allude to some of the um, tools that are out there to support farmers with this. Each standard outlines the requirements to achieve the prescribed standard or outcome but it also has recommendations for continuous improvement should the farmer aspire to be above the standard. And although the recommendations are not compulsory, consumer requirements are constantly changing and a recommendation today could become a requirement in the future. The intention is that on, farm, on a farmer registering for the NZFAT program and becoming a member, they will then have up to three years to work towards meeting the standards um, and can request to be audited against the standard at any time. We're aware that there will be people who have things that they'll want to do um, progressively. So we've gone for the approach of it being uh, having three years to work towards it, um, given there will be changes required. 
Um, it's important to also note that to be eligible to join NZ FAT Plus, you must be NZ FAT certified. Um, I've picked a couple of the standards within NZ FAT Plus to give you a bit of an idea of what's required from a pharma perspective. Um, under the people section, health and safety, um, it's likely that you'll already be doing a lot of what is required under the standard due to the health and safety regulatory changes that came into effect a number of years ago. To meet the standard, you will need to provide evidence of a health and safety policy that complies with New Zealand law. Um, an example of this policy needs to be made available to those working or visiting the farm. Um, the policy needs to include details of your hazard register, how hazards are identified, assessed and managed, along with the location of the likes of the first aid box and fire, fire extinguisher and a number of other aspects. Um, the standard also requires evidence in regard to health and safety training, use of PPE, accident register and material safety data standards. There are a number of tools and resources available to support you to meet this standard, like the Beef and Lamb New Zealand Safety Management System or Farmland Safe Farm online system that's available to their shareholders. Um, there's also a number of other businesses listed in the NZ Fat Plus handbook um, that will help, um, that can support to meet the standard. Under the Farm and Natural Resources um, section, the standard covers aspects of a farm plan of managing natural resources on farm. Areas covered um, are listed on the slide. Um, the planning and documentation standard requires a farm and natural resource plan to be in place. That excludes six of the eight standards listed. Um, stock exclusion and management of crops have been excluded. Um, farm plans for managing natural resources on farm are required by a number of regu regulations such as Hewaka Ekanoa for GHG and climate change in essential freshwater with the need for a freshwater farm plan. As well as this, we're also seeing clear, very clear market signals regarding the opportunities associated with having farm plans and monitoring to demonstrate the environmental sustainable performance and successes on farm. There are many tools and templates to assist you build a natural resources or environmental farm plan, Beef and Lamb have recently released um, their updated farm plan environmental module and offer workshops for farmers. A number of regional councils also have staff that can assist and support in preparing farm plans. Um, the Beef and Lamb farm plan has been developed to align and support NZ Fat Plus. However, there are a lot of other industry options um, that may also be available. It's important to note that don't have to meet everything within the farm plan at once. Um, given that this is a continuous improvement program. Another standard within the farm and natural resources section is the greenhouse gas and climate change. There's a lot of talk about greenhouse gas emissions and climate change currently, with this being a key priority globally and domestically from governments through to disconcerning customers. Both are expecting transparency and action when it comes to the impact that our farms and animals are having on climate change. Carbon accounting throughout the supply chain is increasingly required, and hence it is appropriate that this is included in the program. To meet the greenhouse gas and climate change standard, farmers will need to complete a greenhouse gas inventory, estimate GHG sequestration by December 2024, and complete a written plan that shows the GHG emissions um, will be measured and managed by December 2024. The standard aligns with Hewaka Ekanoa requirements and subsequently by meeting, um, completing your NZ FAT Plus standard, you're meeting your Hewaka Ekanoa obligations as well, removing duplication. We're, you will note that the sequestration and written plan don't need to be completed until 2024, which reinforces that this is a continuous improvement program. So you may decide to do your GHG inventory um, later this year. Um, given we have to have 25% of um, GHG numbers for farmers by December this year. And then complete your um, written plan um, and do your sequestration next year or the year after um, to meet the deadline. Given the industry commitment to Hewak Ekanoa in supporting farmers to meet its targets, there are a lot of resources and tools currently in the marketplace um, and being developed to help support farmers with these requirements. And we spoke earlier about the GHG calculator that's recently been developed by Beef and Lamb New Zealand. In regard to biosecurity, um, it's about reducing the risk and diseases, weeds or pests spreading or leaving your farm. 
Um, biosecurity standards require all biosecurity risk and risk vectors for your farm to be identified. They must be assessed based on likelihood and impact. Um, a farm must also have a biosecurity plan, which includes the processes to manage or minimise existing or introduce risks to your farm. A good biosecurity management plan will show how you're preventing the introduction of pests, weeds and diseases to your property spread around or from your property. Um, biosecurity WAF checklist is a good place to start and identifying ways that can help to protect your farm. And a biosecurity plan template is also available from Landcare Trust. Um, reference to tools and resources that can help you to meet the standard are included in the NZ Plus handbook. And I've referenced a number of these this evening. Hopefully um, this has given you a bit more of an understanding around the standards within NZ Plus and what you'll have to do to meet these standards. Um, as I've said, it's a continuous improvement program. You don't need to meet everything at once. And, um, and what we will be asking for though, is evidence of, that you have a plan in place to work towards meeting the standards. It's over to you which areas you wish to focus on first, given your own circumstances and the strengths and weaknesses of your farm. Key to the success of the NZM Fat Plus program will be to develop culture of continuous improvement within the red meat wool sector, which is driven by farmer knowledge and understanding rather than compliance and regulation. The outcomes as a result of this will be farm businesses that match farm systems and management with the underlying resources to deliver sustainable outcomes for air, water, soil, indigenous biodiversity, animals, people, and communities, as well as resulting in an attractive and preferred workplace. Um, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs by adopting practices that protect and enhance capital, farm and natural resources and supporting thriving communities. This will help New Zealand red meat more farmers continue to have access to consumers internationally while delivering sustainable outcomes. So what next in regard to NZ Fat Plus? And the standards are currently available through your meat or wool processing company. Um, New Zealand Fat Plus handbook is currently being piloted with farmers and will be available in the next um, four to six weeks. That's got a um, wealth of knowledge um, and resources in it and also developing supporting tools and resources um, to help farmers meet the standard. And you'll be able to be ordered, will join the program and be ordered against it from 1st of October. So if you're wanting to know anything um, more about the program or to um, get involved in either NZ Fat or NZ Fat Plus, um, if you speak with your meat or wool company um, and they will be able to um, provide you with information and get you signed up. Thank you. Any questions? If you've got any questions there for me, you can just, just type them in and I'll, uh, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll ask the question. Um, but I guess i just summarise what you're talking about there is that you talk about little things around farm plans that, that people are starting to do and, and a lot of information that's already been collected. I guess this is a this co coordinates a lot of that information together under this this the farm assurance plan, isn't it? Yes, it does. Yes. Um and yeah, it does, but it's not a complete farm plan. So it's just just the relevant sections that meet meet the consumer and um, customer demands that we're seeing globally um, to give the access to market. And, and you know, previously you've you've had farmers having to deal with if they dealt with a number of different meat companies, they had a whole lot of multiple schemes. Yes. Whereas now this is replacing all of these other ones. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. yeah. And it's adopted by you know fifteen of the meat processing companies. So um, yeah, the bulk of the processing companies are there. And, and so you say the bulk because there's still some meat companies to get on board. Oh no, well it's just a smaller smaller supply and you know, a very small. Um, processing companies that um, are still out there, but we're working with them as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and you say that the, the Fat Plus is sort of six weeks away from being ready to go, but it's already designed. So the farmers are out there and they're already if, at the fat level, they can then they can register shortly to get up to the next level. They can. The standard is also um, is already available. So the meat companies have got copies of the standard, um, but we're just sort of finalising the application form and, and the audit process at the moment. Um, but that'll be everything will be available for first of October. Yeah. 